four credits. No. The classes are here. Um, we have two books for you. You can choose. I mean, you can do both. You can choose whichever you'd like. Um, they are studying in science right now. They're unit on weather, so it was actually perfect timing. Um, and they have some questions about your job and stuff. If you All right, so have. I thought we read the book and then ask some questions. Absolutely. Uh, I've never seen you on television before. Oh, thank you. Is it okay to mention your school on television tonight? Yes, mention my name. Uh, what, and what channel is that? Channel 12. Channel 12. So tonight, during the 6 o'clock news, I'll tell everybody about your school. Okay? In 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. You better watch. Now, is today the last day before vacation? Yes. Oh, you must be psyched. Yes. It'll go by fast, so... Before no, uh, before no, it doesn't last too long. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, this weekend is supposed to be pretty mild, and then uh, next Monday and Tuesday for your vacation, we're forecasting 80 degrees. So that'd be kind of that'd be kind of nice on your vacation. It'll feel like summer. And of course, I know you've been studying weather, and this is reading week, so we kind of combine the two to talk about weather and reading, and this is one of my favorite stories. They even made it into a, a full featured movie, uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. The movie came out a couple of years ago. So I, uh, I had to sit in the movie theater with my son, who was seven at the time, to watch Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. I think I liked the movie more than he did. It was a lot of fun. We ate kitchen table one day, and it was Saturday morning, pancake morning. And the mom was squeezing oranges for juice, and Henry and I were betting on how many pancakes we could eat, and there was Grandpa doing, Grandpa doing the flipping. So it was just a typical breakfast. Seconds later, something flew through the air and headed towards the kitchen ceiling, and it landed right on Henry's head. Did you eat that one? No. Yeah. After we realized that the flying object was only a pancake, breakfast continued. And all the other pancakes landed in the pan, and all of them were eaten, even the one that landed on Henry's head. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. As long as Henry ate it, that's probably okay. So that night, touched off by the flying pancake breakfast, Grandpa told us the best tall tale bedtime story he ever told. So this is how that story started. Across an ocean, and over lots of huge bumpy mountains, and across three hot deserts, and one smaller ocean, lay the tiny town of Chu and wow. Wow. Now, in most ways, it was very much like any other side town or small city. It had a main street lined with stores and houses and trees and gardens and a schoolhouse. About 300 people and some cats and dogs. So just kind of typical, typical neighborhood, just like just about here. But there were no food stores in the town of Chulam Farm. There was no stop and shop. Okay? They didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food that they could possibly want. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was the weather. It came three times a day. Of course, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. But, whenever the weather served, that's what they ate. But it never rained rain, and it never snowed snow. And it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice and snowed mashed potatoes and green peas, and sometimes the wind blew in storms of McDonald's hamburgers <laughs> or Burger King. Or... Now, did you know I have a small part of this story? Right there. Is he on TV? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It says the people could watch Tony Petrarca on the weather report on television. There I am. Without glasses. And for some reason I have blonde hair in there. So they had to watch him on every morning to see what the prediction for the next food would be for the next day. And when the townspeople went outside, they carried plates and cups and forks and new, uh, knives and spoons and napkins with them. That way they'd always be prepared for whatever the weather served. And if there were leftovers, and they usually were, the people took them home and put them in their refrigerators in case they got hungry <coughs> in between meals. 
Now, the menu, of course, is like the weather changed every day. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down, and after a brief shower of orange juice and low clouds of sunny side up eggs, we've been followed by pieces of toast and then butter and jelly sprinkled down from the toast, and most of the time it rained milk afterwards. Now, for lunch, hamburgers already in their rolls blew in from the northwest at about five miles per hour. There were mustard clouds nearby, and the wind shifted to the east, and it brought in baked beans and a drizzle of soda finished off the meal. Now, they're sitting in this restaurant, and the name of the restaurant is Ralph's Roofless Restaurant. No roof because of what? Yeah, this food just, food just plops right on your table. And then dinner one night consisted of lamb chops becoming heavy at times, with occasional ketchup and periods of peas, followed by baked potatoes, and then a gradual, wonderful jello setting in the west. So their sunset is just this golden mound of jello. After we have a storm, like a snowstorm, the plows come out, they clear up the roads. The sanitation department of Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job. It had to remove all the food that fell in the houses and the sidewalks and the lawns and the streets. So the workers cleaned things up after every meal and fed all the cats and dogs. And then they emptied some of it into the surrounding oceans for the fish and the turtles and the whales to eat. And the rest of the food was put back into the earth so that the soil would be rich for people's flower gardens. Like you can put certain foods like uh, vegetables and things like that put back in the ground and it helps the soil. So they didn't waste one thing. Now just like any kind of weather, it can get bad, it can get stormy. Okay, but the storms in Chuma Swallow were, were, were very different. Here's an example. Spaghetti ties up the town. With about knee-deep spaghetti noodles all over the road. Life of the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worse. Now, if you get an occasional storm, that's okay, but the problem was they were getting like these weird food storms like every day. Like one day there was nothing but like gorgonzola cheese that dripped down all day long with kind of a stinky cheese. These people have clothespins on their nose. <laughs> The next day, there was only broccoli overcooked. You guys like broccoli? No. Like, I like it, but if it's too, like, um, too mushy, I like it, like, a little snappy. So broccoli overcooked. The next day, there were Brussels sprouts with peanut butter and mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> peanut butter by itself is fine. Even mayonnaise and tuna is fine. But if you put the, both of them together... And then another day, there was a piece of fog, and no one could see where they were going and they could barely find the rest of the meal that got stuck in the fog. <laughs> then it gets even worse. The food was getting larger and larger, and the portions were too, and the people were frightened as these violent storms blew up and these awful things were happening. Now one day there were a hurricane of bread and rolls all day and all night. It was at all different times. There were hard rolls and some with seeds and some without those. Uh, white bread, wheat bread, rye bread, wheat toast, and most of it was larger than they had ever seen before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. The roofs were damaged, and the sanitation department was besides itself. The mess took the workers four days to clean up, and the sea, the ocean, was full of these giant bread rolls. Now, to help the people out, they look, to help out the people piled up as much bread as they could in the backyard, and the birds picked at it, but it just stayed there, and it got stale and stale. Now, the next day, on top of this school, much like this school, there was a giant storm of pancakes, and this giant pancake covered the entire school. It covered the entire roof. No one could get it off because it weighed so much. And this giant maple syrup going down on top of it, they got a tow truck trying to pull it away, a helicopter trying to lift it. Uh, there's uh, maple syrup all over the all over the road in the parking lot. So if you were in that school, the only way you could get out is if you would have to.